Hello everyone and welcome. Final chapter of the season 2 story. The last match of an incredible season. Philadelphia Politoads versus the San Diego Skeledurge. This season's surprise package versus the reigning champion. Two great stories that have one last chance at a happy ending. One last chance to write their names into the history books. But how did we get here? Let's go back, take a look. They couldn't have had more different week one opponents. Of course, no one could have known week one how things were going to play out, but the Politoads faced off against the Prismatic Ice Shards, the team that went on to get the number one seed, while the Dirge faced the Archaeops, that unfortunately finished bottom of the league without a win. The Politoads lost, but they pushed the future number one seed all the way in a 2 1 defeat, while the Dirge decimated the newcomer Archaeops 2 0. Week 2, and things didn't get any easier for the Politoads, as they faced off against the Appleton and the crazy 2 2 2 squad, while the Dirge got a free win versus Tommy's throwing arm. Week 3 was more of the same. But week 4 saw our two finalists take on incredibly tough opponents in the New York Latios for the Politoads and the Ohio City Dogies for the Dirge. Politoads lost again. The Dirge won again, handing the league's newest threat their first loss of the season. This was arguably the turning point of the season though. Week 5 gave the Politoads that all-important first win versus the Archaeops whereas the Dirge faced an old enemy in the Latios and suffered their first defeat. Week 6, and it seemed like the Politoads had lost all momentum by getting Tommy Haxed, and the Dirge lost an incredibly close battle with the unbeaten Ice Shards. We approached the crunch time of the season, our heroes were faulting. The Politoads never really got started. The Dirge had lost all momentum with two defeats on the bounce. Something clicked though, and the Politoes bounced back with a victory over the always game Breloons, while the Dirge put the upstart nice spamming Appleton in their place. Meltemate week of the season. Otter and his Dirge have the honour facing the Woobats in the first ever Bleakman Trophy match, winning this incredible special event 2 0, while the Politoes Face the Dogies in one of the most important matches of the season. Win, and they are almost guaranteed playoffs. The Dogies, on the other hand, were still fighting for a top four spot. In one of the closest battles of the season, the Politoed ground out the victory. Week 9, the final week of the season, the heroes face each other. No one could have predicted this would be a preview of the finals, though. Playoff brackets were pretty much set, and it really didn't look likely. However, the Politos shot the league, defeating the reigning champions 2-1, with them a ton of momentum heading into possibly the toughest playoff match anyone could have gotten. First round of the playoffs came, and while the Dirge dominated an overmatched Wubat side, the Politos faced off against the number one seed, almost undefeated, because Matic Guy Shards won a crazy close battle. Last week we saw two of the best battles of the season as the Politoes repeated their week 8 victory over the Dogies. And the Dirge were once again gifted a win by the Articunos. All roads led here. A climax of a season that has defied all expectations. The comeback of the century versus the first ever repeat. And that 
after the longest intro that nobody wanted to hear, let's jump into the battles. Okay, let's have a quick look at the teams. Ah, Otter has placed a dancing otter over half of the screen. Little bit difficult to see Chris's squad. I'm assuming it's basically the same six that Chris has always brought. So, yeah, team preview is going to be a little bit difficult to analyze. On the other side, you've got to bring that four of Roaring Moon, Zapdos, Sylveon, Heatran. It's been his bread and butter. In the case of Sylveon, Moon and Heatran, the entire season. Zapdos came in a little bit later, but still been such a strong piece for him. For the majority of the season. Then we have Rotom, which he's made incredible use of. He's run screens, he's run nasty plot. It, it's just such a great, versatile Pokemon. And he's also brought the Mamoswine, which makes a lot of sense when three Chris's strongest mons in Iron Hands, Goldengo, GU are weak to ground. So this is going to be a very interesting battle. How will Otter position that Mammoth Swine around Ogre Pond? And how will Chris handle the offensive pressure Zapdos and Mamoswine can put onto his team. So, let's not spend too much time on team preview. Let's get right into the battles. And let's hope the silly dancing otter isn't there when the battles happen. Looks like the Dancing Otter is here to stay. Well, then go Frostlass for Chris. Roaring Moon Heatran for Otter. That's a great lead from Otter. That puts on so much pressure. Elwin into Heat Wave. Would be the play here, I think. One of these has to switch, the other one probably has to Terra. Less. There's a tailwind. He ran now faster. Goldengo dodges. Roslas dies. Cursed body proxa disables the heat wave. Thunderbolt. Not the play gets the para. I'm really surprised at no swap, no terror from Chris there. Here comes Iron Hands. Fake out pressure plus fighting. Goldengo now does switch. In comes Chiyu. Terra, Rom, Otter. Who's it going to be? It's into the Heatran. There's that bug hat he's had on him almost all season long. Knock off into the Chi Yu. Still does a lot of damage. Earth Power into the Iron Hands. Not enough to get the KO. But gets the Spadef drop. Bulldoze. He did this last time. This time, did she use bulky enough to take it? Speed drops all round though.
probably not going to be enough to make that Chi Yu outspeed. But it protects. Breaking swipe from the Roaring Moon. I'm going to drop that Iron Hands attack. Would have taken out the Chi Yu as well had it not protected. Earth Power gets rid of the Iron Hands. Goldengo will return. Finally get a Terra from Chris. Imagine it's going to be Terra Fairy on the Dengo. Yes, it is. Big heart hat. Roaring Moon gets fully powered. Flash Cannon predicting the Terra. Goldengo goes down. Heatwave from Chi Yu. Flash fire. Heatrans. Heatrans heatwave no longer disabled. Oh, that heatwave doesn't quite get rid of the Roaring Moon. Hellwind, reset, Earth Power finishes the job. Game one goes to Otter. That bulldoze Iron Hands, I just don't think is the play for Chris. He's putting damage down on his own Chi Yu. And with the Tailwind up, it's not going to help Chi Yu outspeed anything because it's also dropping Chi Yu speed. The play there would have been fake out, swap in Chi Yu, protect Chi Yu, bulldoze so that Chi Yu doesn't get the speed drop. Once again, Otter though, coming up with perfect leads. He did it in the quarterfinals versus me, where I had just no answer to Zapdos Moon. And he's done it again here. Now Chris needs to find an answer to Moon Heatran. Can he do it in game two? Iron Hands Ogre Pawn on the lead. Roaring Moon Heatran. But we do see the same from Otter. A complete change up from Chris. Immediate terror from Chris. Into the <clears throat> into the Ogre Pond. Getting that nice Spadef boost. Plus the extra boost on the Ivy Cudgel. Terror from Otter as well into the heat trap. Becoming a bug type. Take out into the Roaring Moon. Stop that Tailwind. Ivy Cudgel, is it going to be enough? It went into the Heatran. A critical hit. Takes out the Heatran. Game 1 Menace is gone. But now he has to deal with the Sylveon. Iron Hand switches out. Into Chi Yu. Reducing the Spadef of his own Ogre Pond after it's got that boost. I'm not too sure about that. Especially when there's a very tight type of voice also incoming. Ivy Cudgel though. Into the Sylveon. Is it going to be enough? Another crit and another one shot. 
Ooh, that was a gamble. But a gamble that paid off. Zapdos hits the field. That was a minus one? Heavy cudgel as well? Ogapon switches out reset in that stat drop. In comes Iron Hands once again. Breaking swipe. Oh, that did a lot of damage to Chi Yu. Brave Bird into the Chi Yu, finishes it off. Takes a little bit of recoil damage. Now we have a Gold Dango. No Terror available, but that Dazzling Gleam is still going to hurt. Fake out pressure as well from the Iron Hands. There's the fake out into the Roaring Moon. Brave Bird from the Zapdos. Ooh. It's a good chunk of damage, but you'd want a bit more. A Dazzling Gleam finishes off the Roaring Moon. Gets a lot of damage down on that Zapdos. With Brave Bird recoil will probably take it out. There's the Brave Bird into the Iron Hands. Still not enough. And the Brave Bird recoil does finish it off the Zapdos. Great adjustment from Chris there. Now it's over to Otter. Otter just like every great story. It has to go to a nail-biting conclusion. A deciding game three in the deciding match at the conclusion of an incredible season. One final game for all the marbles. One final game to write your name in the history books. Will it be the epic comeback story? Or will it be the incredible title retention? This is it. Iron Hands Gold Dengo for Chris. He tried Roaring Moon again. For Otter. There's that boost of speed. We will likely see the fake out. Roaring Moon switches. Into the Zapdos. Terra from Chris. Going to be into the Goldango. Oh no, that was a Terra from Otter. Into the Heatran. Bug type once again. Fake out goes into the Zapdos. Heat wave. Almost one shot to Goldengo. Dazzling Gleam in return. Ooh, almost takes out the Zapdos on the switch. That's a good chunk of damage to that heat tram too. Goldengo switches out. Into the GU. Beta Ruin's going to nullify that Assault Vest. Ooh, we get a Terror onto the Iron Hands. Fairy Terror Iron Hands. Brave Bird into the Chi Yu on the switch. Ooh, takes it all the way down to Sash. Recoil takes out Zapdos, but it's done its job. Earth power into the fairy hands. Not going to do it. Wild charge. Finishes off the Heatran. Oh. We are now down to Roaring Moon 
and Sylveon. The dynamic duo that started it all for Otter now has to finish it. No fake out. Be you protect. The tailwind is going to go up. We now have the super speedy kick ass Eevee back. A voice. Finishes off the Iron Hands. Fairy does not resist Fairy. Ogre Pawn hits the field. She use switches out. Goldango is going to be coming back in. Acrobatics. Oh, almost one shots the Ogre Pawn. Hyper Voice finishes off both. And the duo that started it all has finished it all. Roaring Moon Sylveon with a lead in Otter's first match of the season. And they are the cleanup crew in the final match of the season. What an incredible final! Very, very fitting game to end the season. So close. After that game one, I was worried it was going to be a whitewash. Chris turned it around fantastically well in game two. And then game three. Oh. It was anyone's guess as to how that was going to finish up. Was insane absolutely insane congratulations to otter on retaining his title congratulations and commiserations to chris congratulations on what was a remarkable turnaround but unfortunately just couldn't get the happy ending the story deserved Next week, we should have what they're calling the Grand Final, which is going to be Otter, winner of Wi-Fi League, versus Hop, the winner of the Showdown League. Is going to be played on Showdown, unfortunately, but it will be a stream, which I will upload the VOD for. I'm not sure I'll do an edited video for it since I haven't covered the Showdown League at all this season, but I will get hold of the VOD, edit it down to just the battle so that we do have the grand final of the Regal Draft League to complete the set. With that epic final, we have ended the season for the Wi-Fi League. I will be having a little season review slash awards show that I'm putting together right now. There will be a Google form in the Discord. Discord, of course, is linked in the video description. Join, vote. Let's have a little bit of fun in the final video of the season. I will see you all for that one.